As global temperatures rise, so is the frequency of heat waves. And while everyone is feeling the heat, children are more affected as they experience heat differently from adults. The younger the child, the greater the danger. Relative to their body weight, children generate more heat than adults. They also have a higher ratio of surface area to mass, so they can absorb more of the heat around them. And they sweat less, making it harder to cool off. Other things make them more vulnerable too. Children's immune systems and organs are still developing. Having to work so hard to cool down puts immense stress on these systems, which can overload them and cause damage. This even starts in the womb. Heat stress can affect fetal development, putting a baby at risk of cardiovascular diseases, neurological dysfunction and cognitive development issues. Pregnant women are also at a heightened risk of complications, including preterm birth and gestational diabetes, putting both mother and baby in danger. There are two forms of heat stress, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Heat exhaustion usually happens first. Symptoms can include extreme thirst, weakness, tiredness, muscle cramps, nausea or vomiting, dizziness and excessive sweating, and faster breathing or a faster heart rate. A child with heat exhaustion has around 30 minutes to cool down before things can turn more serious. To heat stroke. Heat stroke requires emergency medical attention. Signs include a severe headache, dizziness, confusion, loss of consciousness, seizures, little or no sweating, flushed, hot and dry skin, and a body temperature of 40.5 degrees centigrade or more. In the worst case, it can lead to organ failure and even death. High temperatures can affect children's mental health and their ability to sleep and can undermine their concentration, leaving them struggling to learn. The good news is that heat exhaustion, heat stroke and other long-term impacts can be prevented. But everyone, including children, parents, teachers and health workers, must be able to recognise the signs and know how to prevent it. Simple steps make a big difference, including regular breaks for children playing outside, shade, constant access to water and scheduling outdoor activities early or late in the day. Remember that babies are fine with the same amount of clothing as adults and never ever leave a child alone in a parked car. But we also need schools, hospitals and playgrounds to be designed to handle the rising temperatures. And most urgently of all, governments must reduce CO2 emissions to keep global warming to under 1.5 degrees.